Lovely. Lovely. The most lovely. This list Always is very lovely. lovely. Absolutely. A lot of hope. I agree. A lot of hope. A lot of hope. I have faith. Welcome back to Most Amazing. Here are the top 10 extinct animals from the dark ages scientists want to bring back to life. Ooh. Not good. Number 10, the woolly mammoth. It was announced that not long ago that a team of scientists and entrepreneurs announced that they were trying to bring back the woolly mammoth back to life. No zoo will ever be the same again, or smell the same for that matter. A company called Colossal is responsible for this colossal project. The brilliant team of scientists are planning to bring the woolly mammoth back to life by creating an elephant embryo made of mammoth genomes. Pretty cool. Have you ever seen Jurassic Park? I feel like they haven't seen Jurassic Park. It's kind of a bad idea. The last mammoth to ever live was 7,500 years ago, but what if we had these hairy goliaths back again today? The Siberian tundra thousands of years ago was once full of woolly mammoths, but climate change began to slow them down. It also didn't help that humans needed food. And these guys could surely feed a family of four. Mammoths also provided warmth, which was perfect for early humans. It's pretty cold out there. Genetics company Colossal raised over $15 million to try and bring this animal back to life. But should they? Number nine, the woolly rhinoceros. Yeah, since we're on the woolly train, what better time to mention this hairy beast? The woolly rhino, I oddly wanna pet him. Just one, just one brush. Once upon a time, these rhinos were common throughout Europe and Asia. They were well prepared for the cold tundra. They had a thick blanket of fur, just like the old woolly mammoth. So no ice age will stop this rhino. I mean, it didn't help them out, but it was mostly humans needing food and warmth that led to their extinction. But cut to 14,000 years later, we're trying to apologize. We're trying to make it up to them by bringing Bringing them back to life. Hi, you exist now. Isn't that great? To a world that's even more harsh. Yeah, remember when it was cold? <laughs> well, now it's really warm. Good game, rhinos. Might want to go get a haircut. The same company responsible for the Mammoth Project is also trying to bring back this hairy boy. I mean, I'm all for science, don't get me wrong, but if this species died off that long ago, will highways help? Eh, prob probably not. <clears throat> Number eight, the Heath Hen. It's interesting, I don't know anything about that. Here we go, finally something that isn't the size of a minivan. I'm already excited. The Heath van we lost quite recently actually, which of course is sad. We're losing birds rapidly, especially in North America. Our prairies are shrinking and they're being converted to agriculture. By 1870, the only remaining Heath hens were protected in a vineyard, or a vineyard, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. But sadly, when 1932 rolled around, those fluffy dudes were no more. Also, Thanksgiving dinners didn't help. I get hungry sometimes. Yeah, we ate another animal to extinction. I'm seeing a pattern here. However, all hope is not lost for the Heath hens, hence the title of this list. A company called Revive and Restore, good name, they're trying to get these hens back to the sky rather than back on our plates. They've been working with the community since 2014 with some scientific help from the prairie chicken. Before we continue, if you haven't done so already, go check out our sister page Bumblebee. Taylor and I break down top 10 lists, but it's all ancient history, medieval stuff, lots of knights, lots of knights. We love knights here and, and castles. So make sure to check out our Bumblebee Facebook page for more and maybe some behind the scenes content. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. Maybe some Wild West stuff too, you don't know. Maybe maybe some yees or haws. I don't know. We may have done some yees haws. Thank you. That was great. Thank you a lot. Number seven, great auk. Once thriving in colonies off North Atlantic coasts, the great auk would grow up to 30 inches long. And it's, it's tiny little wings would only be used to swim. So don't get too excited. These little balls of fluff did not fly in the skies. Their wings were, were really tiny. They were like 13 centimeters long. Just a little... They were cute, but quite defenseless. I don't know if you could have picked up on that. You know, very cute, very defenseless, obviously. Fluffy dudes. Around the 1500s, European fishermen discovered this perfect area for hunting, and it just happened to be where most, if not all, these great ox were thriving. Newfoundland, yeah, it looked like the iceberg in Club Penguin at this point. It was packed. It was a good time if you, you know, weren't a great ox. You were eating good if you were a fisherman, so their number rapidly declined. By 1950, the last two known specimens were hunted by one single fisherman on LD Island, just off the coast of Iceland. One dude just thanos an entire bird species. What a monster. Scientists plan on using genetic information extracted from their fossils or preserved organs. You know, we love organs in jars. So they plan on editing their DNA with the closest living species, which is now the razor billed auk. The organization Revive and Restore is behind the wheel on this one again. You'll see these names come up a few times over and over on this list because, yeah, not too many companies are trying to revive dead animals. What do you know? Number six, the Stellar Sea Cow. Named after George Wilhelm Steller, who discovered this ball of blubber back in 1741. The Steller sea cow was first discovered during the Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition. They found her right after the crew became shipwrecked. Hmm. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse. Here's a surprise sea cow to confuse you. Good luck. They were quite common millions of years ago, but sadly, and unsurprisingly, they were no match for humans. They only swam about a meter deep, so they were quite easy to hunt. George Steller assures that these creatures were made of pure love. They had strong bond with their families, which made it even easier easier to hunt. That's sick. Taylor. <laughs> that's Taylor. Wow, that's really sad. 
What's also sad is my pronunciation of gestation, considering they had a one year gestation period. The species just couldn't reproduce fast enough to keep up with the hunting. But scientists were able to sequence their genome, which means we could see these creatures again one day. The answer may lie in the DNA of a dugong. Is that a Pokemon? That's a Pokemon, isn't it? That's a Pokemon. Number five, the dodo bird. So dodo birds were once big and beautiful. These flightless ground nesting birds once filled the islands of the Indian Ocean. They had massive talons. They were pretty scary. They were gray and blue, so they were beautiful. They didn't have any natural predator, right? This sounds great. No natural predator until we came along, of course. Around 1507, the island was discovered by Portuguese sailors, and the rest, yeah, you can guess, the rest is history. They were the easiest bird to hunt. Had the phrase dead as a dodo, right? They were easy to take out. <laughs> they weren't just loved by sailors either. They were not 100% to blame here, okay? Monkeys, rats, pigs, any animal that made its way to the island just had their eggs for lunch. It was so easy. So it didn't take a long time for the dodo population to completely be gone. The last dodo was hunted in 1681, but could it be on this list? Could we bring back the dodo bird today? Hopefully, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Scientists found an extremely well-preserved dodo skeleton back in 2007, so we may have a chance of picking apart some DNA. A research facility near Melbourne, Australia is currently trying to use pigeon genes to bring this bird back. Again, I'm all for science, I'm all for bringing animals back to life. You know, scientifically, that's a feat in itself. Great work, we love it. But do we really think no one's gonna make dodo bird chicken wings? That's a problem waiting to happen. As soon as I said it, you were like, oh, that would be pretty good. <laughs> Number four, Pyrenean Ibex. I'm just as confused as you guys are. That Pyrenean and Ibex went extinct 22 years ago. Last one was seen in 2000, my friends. The last one was a female named Celia. That's so nice. A falling tree sadly killed her. That, oh my god. That's horrible. <laughs> a subspecies of the Spanish Ibex were once native to the Pyrenees Mountains on the border of Spain and France. Back in the Dark Ages, medieval times, their population was reduced drastically to an endangered level. They would roam the land, but knights with swords and bows and armies to feed, you know, you can kind of guess what happened there. Disease being spread by humans at this point also played an important role in their demise. Humans could barely keep up, let alone animals. The Pyrenean Ibex was successfully cloned and brought back from extinction for a whopping seven minutes. DNA from the last living lady was implanted into the womb of a domestic goat. Science is wild, dude, that's so crazy. Lung complications are why the clone didn't last longer than seven minutes, but listen, listen to what I just said. They made a clone for seven minutes. It's a start. Number three, the Tasmanian tiger. Once native to Australia, classic, the Tasmanian tiger, also known as the thylacine, you have to say that in an Australian accent, the thylacine. It was a massive thylacine. I'm gonna say that all day now. It was a massive carnivorous marsupial that went extinct around the 1930s. So major factors here, as you probably have guessed, climate change, hunting, and its genetic diversity wasn't all too great. It's sad on one hand because these beautiful creatures disappeared so recently, but it's recent enough that we have a shot at bringing them back. Yeah, <gasps> just back to life. Hi, that was a close one. Go hunt. Yeah, imagine looking outside and seeing this thing on your front yard. Are we ready for this? I can barely handle like deer in Canada. I don't know. Squirrels? Black squirrels? They're scary up in Canada. I don't know. Thank God for those jars though. About time we open those up. Some jars of organs. Classic. Already we have some of the Tasmanian tiger genes present after scientists, you know, inserted them into a mouse fetus and they're just waiting to see what happens. The Australian Museum has been working hard to bring this beast back to life. And they're close. They're only still lacking the DNA fully to recreate it. So if you have any jars of Tasmanian tiger parts, comment down below. Hit that thumbs up. Let us know. We'll bring them back. Number two, the gastric brooding frog. That just sounds like it needs to be shot. I'm a big fan of frogs. I mean, I don't mind them. You know, they're green and stuff and they're slimy, I guess. They're pretty cool. You know, except for when they hatch babies out of their backs. Taylor showed me a video of that earlier and I almost threw up. There's a joke there somewhere, but uh, I don't know. That's just gross, dude. Why would you show me that, Taylor? Frogs are wild, but back in the day, they were quite dangerous to be around. Gastric brooding frogs, for one, are so alien. These frogs would swallow its egg and hatch them from their mouth. No. So if you saw this in the wild, you would know. You might just see one soon. Maybe your kids will see one in the wild. Now they went extinct back in 1983, but scientists have figured out a way to implant dead cells into a fresh egg from an entirely different frog species. Let's just hope these new ones aren't born out of their back and we're, we're golden. I don't have to oh, think about that. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh. And finally, number one, the Megatherium. Mega, big last, number one, mega number one. That's actually not that big. We talked about bringing back the woolly mammoth. So what other Ice Age cast member can we see in live action in the future? Let's see, perhaps the Megatherium, AKA the giant ground sloth. Yeah, they're kind of cute. They're scary, but 
they're pretty cute. They're, they're slow and cute. Sloths used to be a lot bigger than we think. We often laugh at them for being so slow. The movie Ice Age sure didn't help their case as the dodo birds. Of course, the giant ground sloth is closely related to our modern three-toed sloth, but luckily for us, today's sloths aren't the same size as an elephant. Yeah, because that would be a horror film, wouldn't it? If a giant elephant-sized sloth started to slowly climb a tree outside of my house, I'd be sick. I wouldn't wake up. I'd be like, that's it. I'm, my heart's... I had a heart attack. That's the scariest thing I've ever seen. We may be able to bring this one back, although they died off 8,000 years ago. It's still possible. Anything is possible with science and a little hope and fear. DNA samples were extracted from their hair remains, so the next step is to develop a fetus in an artificial womb. That's the hard part, so keep... Keep in tune for that. Keep in tune for that. That's the thing we like to say here. Keep in tune, guys. Keep in tune for part two. All Those right. are the top 10 extinct animals from the Dark Ages. We had our boy Big Ched from Bumblebee. I came over. It's a guest spot. They kind of just took me out of the room. They pulled me in. I don't know what was going on. Yeah. We're like, hey, shut up. Just come in here. That's what came and said to me. <laughs> <laughs> shut up! Like, did you're, Now you're over here. If you want to see more Bumblebee, me, and Ched, and some more history, go to the Facebook Bumblebee and have a good time. Otherwise, we'll see you here. Most amazing top 10. I'm Taylor Bye. McWatters. Bye. I'm, I'm, I'm Chetty. Bye. It's Chetty. Bye. Bye. <laughs> They've never seen Jurassic Park, obviously. That's right, amen. Hey, Ever. Like, I, how, how many Jurassic Parks do we need to make for you to get the point? Wow, that's really sad. <laughs> wow, that's really sad. No, like, it's sad. It's the cow with a C. We love the dugongs. Yeah, honestly, this is a dugong. This is a, du a dugong? All right, we bomb this one. Take out. <gasps> that's some good improv. That's some yes and. He's standing right there, too. I should aim not at you. That's crazy. Oh. Also, I was right. I'm a Pokemon master. This is a that's a dugong. That is, uh, yeah. That's a dugong. I, I can't really, but that's that's a look. That's a dugong, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Okay. What the hell? A Prinerian ibex? What the f is that, Taylor? What the hell? You, you know I'm dyslexic, right? The last one was a female named Celia. A falling tree sadly killed her. Oops. Pyr. Jeez, don't people know they can't read out there? Pyrenees. The Pyrenees Mountains. Seven minutes in heaven with your clone. I'd make out with myself, I would do it. I wonder, everyone's like, oh, would you fight yourself? I'm like, no, I'd cuddle myself, are you kidding? These arms around myself, what does it feel like? 